Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at regional integration, okay? So we're underneath the topic challenges and opportunities of regional integration, okay? So this is simply because um, this topic was requested by my subscribers, right? So I'm devi deviating a little bit, okay? All right, so what is regional integration? Regional integration is a process in which neighboring states enter into an agreement in order to upgrade cooperation through common institutions and rules. Okay, now what is this? Regional integration really simply describes the coming together of a number of nation states to form a single unit in which member states cooperate functionally, economically, and politically. Regional integration aims to produce benefits for each country within the region and for the region as a whole. Okay, now benefits should, you know, result from more efficient use of resources and less duplication of effort and expenditure. Okay, now the integrated nations will also have a more powerful voice and trading stance on the global stage. So that is why it's very important, right? So, Caribbean nations are all developing countries, but are at different stages of development. They have different resources at their disposal and are at different points in process of developing human resources. Okay, hope you guys got that. Now, some are classified as less developed countries, which is known as LDCs, right? So, anywhere you see LDCs, it means less developed countries right and others as more developed countries which is mdc's okay now arrangements are made in the integration process i've always recognized that you know these different stages of development and also that countries within the region all have special and different characteristics right okay so we're going to look at the aims of regional integration okay so regional integration seeks to first overcome some of the problems facing the region. Secondly, to address some of the consequences of unevenness of resource distribution. Third, it aids in the development of human resources. Fourth, to provide improved health services as well as education. Fifth, make use of natural resources as best as possible that one is very important right and sixth which is the last one economic development assistance through developing policies which assist businesses okay okay so we're going to move on to major challenges facing the caribbean okay now Major challenges facing the region are felt to varying degrees by different countries, right? Now, MDCs may, for example, have relatively large and modern manufacturing, including up-to-date technologies in some sectors, okay? Because it is L um, MDCs, right? So, their economies may be more diversified and service industries may be more developed. However... Even in these countries, progress still needs to be made in equitable provision of health and social services, right? Modernization of infrastructure and efficiencies in government. So they all need that, regardless of the fact that they are MDCs. Okay, now the impetus for a movement for, um, towards regional integration took place in the context of such challenges. And with the idea that cooperation among the nations and a greater degree of sharing of physical and human resources. Now that would help all members of the region to face and overcome them. Okay? Okay. So moving on. So first up, we have small island development states. Right? And this is the SIDS. What is this really? Okay. Now, this is really Caribbean island nation are um, categorized, sorry, 
as small island development states, okay? Now, these countries share certain circumstances and challenges, including small populations, limited resources, natural disasters, vulnerability to, struggling with that word, sorry, vulnerability to external economic shocks, right? Such as a rapid rise in import costs or fall in the value of the export, right? And ecological fragility due to their small size. Per, ca per capita costs for public administration and infrastructure development are high. And it's the same, um, you know, for the provision of energy and transport, right? Now, it also is, you know, it is also difficult for small nations such as this to, you know, create domestic savings. This is the money available at a national level and in commercial lending institutions that could be used for investment purposes, right? So, small nations struggle to produce goods and services at a competitive price. And to find adequate human and financial resources in the quantities needed, they do struggle to get all of that, right? In addition, such countries are not always in a position to easily take full advantage of the new technologies, right? Because these are really um, LDCs, right? Now, it is usually harder for a small population to generate sufficient revenue from its economic activities, right? The situation is made easier if the country is fortunate enough to have some, you know, valuable natural resources. Now, small countries also face difficulties because the small population means that there is a limited domestic market for products and services, okay? Okay, so we are really going to look at next the challenges because all of that was just you know just the tip of the iceberg so we're getting deep into the challenges that is facing the caribbean so first up low productivity what is that now low productivity is a measure of efficiency right productivity productivity is a measure of efficiency and is about the relationship between outputs which is which are which are goods and services and inputs it, which are required to produce outputs, right? Now, low productivity indicates inefficiency and high level of inputs in relation to outputs. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. Okay. Now, the Caribbean region generally has low producti productivity levels, right? Now, partly as a result of other challenges, including limited resources, underdeveloped human resources and lack of investment now low productivity makes production costs higher and products less competitive so you see what what what, what low productivity can do right this can damage a country okay now high production costs mean that products cannot be competitively you know, price and low level of production means that the quantities required by developed markets cannot be produced. Both of these limited limit, you know, the ability of the Caribbean countries to gain access to the markets of developed countries. Okay? Okay. So moving on. Inadequate technology and infrastructure. Okay. What is that? Technological innovation brings about more efficient methods of production, such as mechanization in agriculture or automation, or automation in factory processes, right? Now, the greatest technological innovations of the last, like, 50 years have involved um, computers and more recently and significantly information and communication technology, which is ICT, okay? Now, this has brought us to the internet, right? The World Wide Web and mobile phone technology. Now, a world report in 2009 recognized that the provision of, of um, and the access to broadband internet services 
and a reliable mo mobile telephone system are, you know, key elements of a country's ability to pursue economic, right? Or economic development, rather, right? And to encourage job creation, okay? So, providing the necessary infrastructure for an internet broadband network is more challenging and more, like, expensive in the Caribbean because of the geographical separation of the individual countries. Now, similar challenges apply to the distribution of power and energy supplies, including electricity and the physical transportation of goods and people. Okay? All right, that was a long one. So moving on to number three, debt burden. And this is economic. The, 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 this is an economic challenge, right? Now, debt burden, what is this? All countries have a gross domestic product which is GDP, right? This is really the total market value of all goods and services produced. All countries also borrow money to maintain their economies, right? And to finance various projects and services. The money is borrowed from various institutions, such as commercial financial institutions, right? Regional financial institutions, such as the Caribbean Development Bank, and from international financial institutions such as the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank. Okay, so moving on. Natural disaster that we cannot, we cannot control. No. A further challenge in the region's vulnerability to natural disaster such as hurricanes and floods, right? These disasters bring havoc by devastating communities, right? Damaging housing, health, education, and social facilities, and destroying, like, you know, or interrupting supplies of power or, you know, fresh water. Now, preparation for such disasters and recovery following such an event costs huge amounts of money, and they are always psychologically, you know, uh, and social implications too. So psychological and social implications are there. So natural disasters, you know, cause all of that. But as I said, this is something that we cannot avoid or we cannot stop. Okay? All right. So moving on. Import and export. And this is also, these are also economic challenges. Okay? Now, the historical basis for Caribbean economies, they, you know, has been agricultural products that tend to have a comparatively low value as exports. In addition, these and other raw materials, such as mineral ores, uh, they are often exported in their natural state with processing, right, as we all know, which adds value taking place in other countries. Now, most countries in the Caribbean, you know, have to rely heavily on imports that are expensive. With the exception of Trinidad and Tobago, Caribbean countries spend large amounts importing expensive fuels for energy and um, generation, right? So, so, a lot of money is spent on energy generation, right? So, change, changing... It, um changing taste patterns have seen you know an increase in demand for imported food and other natural goods so you know this is where we fall because we're not supporting our own goods we rather to import and that is damaging the country but that's my take on it most of you will disagree but all right so moving on so what else we are going to be looking at Major strategies in the integration movement. Okay, what are these? Okay, the first major regionalism initiative of recent times was the West Indies Federation. Okay, now this sought to create a political union between its 10 member states. And these are Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, 
Saint Kitts and Nevis Angela, Saint Lucia and Saint Vincent. Okay. Now the federation was established by the British Caribbean Federation Act in 1956 and came into being in 1958. A federal government was established, right? Headed by an exec um, executive um, governor general, right? Okay, so moving on. Now, some fundam fundamental um, issues were debated, such as, uh, first up, we have centralized planning. What is this? Centralized planning is really planned economy. I guess you guys should know that. And planned economy is a system where inputs are based on direct allocation, right? So moving on to the second one, direct taxation by federal government. What is that? Now, as you know, a government, you know, levy on um, an individual's income, property, or wealth. Same tax that everybody pays, okay? So moving on to number three, regional customs union. What is this? Now, this is an agreement in which is made um, by two or more countries to remove trade barriers and eliminate or reduce customs duty on manual trade. Okay? So, the last one is revision of the federal constitution. Okay? So now, we're going to move on to CARIFTA. Now, what is CARIFTA? CARIFTA means Caribbean Free Trade Association for all who didn't know. All right. So, okay. What is it really? This is a multilateral free trade area composed of Caribbean nations and dependencies that existed during 1965 to 1972. Okay. Okay. Now, the Federation, ah, all right. The Federation sought to establish federal institutions and created a, you know, you know, a free trade association, which was founded in December 1965 following the signing of, you know, the Dickinson Bay Agreement by the original members, right? Which are Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago. In July of 1967. Now these territories were joined by Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, uh, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and um, the Grenadines, right? Now Montserrat and Jamaica joined in you know August of that year and Belize in 1971. Okay? Now Carifta was an attempt to join the economies of these recently independent nations and to give them a stronger presence in international affairs okay now CARIFTA is also sought to increase balance regional development in, by you know increasing trade between members and encouraging diversification of products and services and also liberalize, um, liberalization of trade okay now these as well as Providing for free trade, the agreement also sought to address the imbalance experienced by some LCDs, right? This would be achieved by, first, as you know, we are going to be looking at WISA. Next, right? Now, what is this? WISA, the West Indies Associated states council of ministers let me show you see the west indies associated states council of ministers okay so no this is a former political organization of islands in the caribbean sea that were british colonies who you know whose status changed from change um to free association with the united kingdom in 1967 Okay, now, as you know, the West Indies Associated State Council of um, Ministers, which is WISA, 
was was established in um, 1967 by members of the early um, federation apart from Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, now the main objectives of WIC were to promote economic integration among its members and functional cooperation by jointly administering certain common services. Now, the collaboration led to establishment of the East Caribbean Common Market, which is the ECCM. So that's East Caribbean Common Market. Now, the West Indies State Supreme Court, the Eastern Caribbean Currency Authority, ECCA, and joint overseas mission to the UK and to Canada. Okay? I'm hoping I'm not confusing anyone with all these abbreviations right here. Okay. Now, as some member states gain political independence, the um, Council of Ministers saw the need for even deeper relationships with you know, which, you know, led to the formation of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. As you know, that is OECS, Organizations of Eastern Caribbean States. Okay, guys, so that's it for my video. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for all my subscribers. If you like my video, you can give a thumbs up. You can share, you can comment. Um, let me know exactly what it is you'd like to be discussed uh, and that's it so for those who haven't yet subscribed you can subscribe to know when I release a new video okay all right thank you bye